Today on Graphics TV, we are talking about why you should not use stock photography and how you can build your own mini studio. And I say mini in quotation marks. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Mac. Welcome to Graphics TV. In my opinion, as a designer, you should not be using stock photography. And this is because stock photography is not exclusive to you, unless obviously you buy the most expensive uh, license. So in my experience over the years in web and print design, I've noticed some of my pictures appearing on numerous other websites. And this makes your, I mean, this makes your designs look uh, less original and even less professional to an extent. But I know in some cases it's inevitable. So in this quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up a mini studio and how you can take your own photos for your own projects. Let's take a look at what you're gonna need for your setup. Okay, first we're gonna need masking tape. This is just basically to stick down any backdrops. We're gonna need also a soft box. These are now inex inexpensive, you can find these on eBay or Amazon. You're also going to need a desk or a flat surface where you can place your objects on. And finally, you're going to need a camera. In this particular tutorial, I used my iPhone 4 just to prove that you can create great images from your basic smartphone. Okay, here's a picture I took of my setup. I guess now you know why I was saying studio in quotation marks. <laughs> Anyway, um, you can see I've got my softbox and I've also created a backdrop because I wanted like a seamless white background behind my objects. And I've done this on a flat surface and uh, just for extra light, I did this against my bedroom window. Okay, let's take a look at how the images came out. To get these images looking the way they are, I did a little bit of editing in Photoshop. Let me just show you how, what I did. So what I did is open the document in Photoshop, went to the layer panel and then duplicated the layer and then chose the blending mode of soft light. Let's do a before and after. So you can see it makes the image a bit better. So that's all I did and then I saved the image as a normal JPEG. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, you can email me or you can leave the comments in the comments box down below. Don't forget to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching.